Today's subject is the future of at-home flight simulation. I'm sure a very popular topic for most of us in the room here. Many of us probably know that several years ago, FSX, Microsoft Flight Simulator X, was officially sort of decommissioned. Microsoft isn't doing any development in the flight simulation world these days. But there's lots that's come out since then, and much has been available even up to that point. And so we're looking today at what the future holds for flight simulation. Is it going to be different platforms that we'll see, maybe existing platforms start to expand and become more popular, perhaps new platforms coming out there. We have with us today probably one of the most extensive panels when it comes to knowledge about flight simulation, and we're very thrilled to have so many great personalities from the flight simulation world joining us here today. And as a starting point, I'll ask them each just to introduce themselves. We'll probably start down at the far left, just pass the mic along, and then I have a couple of questions for people, but we'll mostly let the discussion go. And I'd love to take some questions from the audience if we do have time at the end, depending on how things go. So I'll let uh, DeAndre there at the far side start, and I'll just get you to pass the mic on down to him. Howdy all, DeAndre Newman, avid flight simulation enthusiast, enthusiast since 1995. Uh, ever since my dad uh, got the first A10 Warthog simulators on Mac and uh, got my first PC in 2002 and uh, started up with Air Daily X in 2010. So if you've never heard of it, AirDailyX.net, which is basically just for news, reviews, blah, blah, blah. So uh, again, great turnout this year and glad to see everyone here. And feel free to jump in with any sort of opening thoughts or ideas that you have as well on the subject or on the panel as you introduce yourselves. Okay. I don't have to think now. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Winfred Dickmann from Aerosoft. I'm a co-founder and uh, CEO of Aerosoft. I'm at Aerosoft since 1991. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, and yes, we are um, supporting flight simulation in all uh, shades. So, uh, explain, prepare 3D, FSX, FSX Steam, and so on. And uh, I hope uh, many of the people here will know us and we are always trying to give you the best products. If not, please tell me, and we will try to solve the problem. If it is not our problem, uh, or our product, it is, it is the his. developer's fault. It is, it is, his, it is his problem. <laughs> Anybody needs Winfred's phone number, it is. <laughs> uh, I am Robert Randazzo. Uh, I am the founder of PMBG Simulations. Um, I started uh, PMBG because I was running out of money to pay for all my flight ratings uh, back in 1997. And uh, it has turned into something that uh, I never imagined. We've now got a team that's spread all over the world, which uh, is not very good for my sleep habits. But, um, uh, but we've got uh, a number of products uh, on, the, on the market already for FSX and for uh, FSX Steam Edition and for P3D. And uh, as I mentioned during uh, my briefing a couple minutes ago, we just pushed our first uh, product for X-Plane into beta testing yesterday, so pretty soon we'll be hitting all three platforms. Uh, and if uh, our tech support guys who actually are here in the back of the room, they can't solve it, they'll give you Winfred's home phone number. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know who I am? I think I'm Peter Wright. I'm Frugal, Frugal Sim. I'm a columnist for PC Pilot Magazine and also the host of YouTube.com slash Frugal Sim. I guess the only opening statement I've got is the same one I had this morning when I finished out my own presentation. We're in something of a sim renaissance and uh, things look good from this point forward. Uh, my name is Justin Friedland. I'm one of, uh, I think, 38 vice presidents at VATSIM. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. But, but I am. And, uh, uh, I've been in simming, I, I think I have you, I might have many of you. Uh, this is my first flight simulator. That's FSA. Right, that's a flight simulator for Ma Apple Macintosh. That's when it only ran on Mac. 1986. So that's 
30 years of flight simulation. These were little wireframe airplanes. Pretty exciting. But I have watched the simulation world advance uh, and been a part of it and feel honored to have been a part of it. And it's great to see all of you folks here um, uh, pushing us forward and making this more relevant to all of our lives. And so I'm really looking forward to uh, hearing what you have to say and hearing what all these panelists have to say. All right, good afternoon. I'm Nels Anderson, the founder of uh, FlightSim.com. Uh, right, so I guess everybody knows what that is. Uh, we've been around since 1996, so a few years. And actually, I got into that because I, my earlier hobby was actually running online systems back before the internet when we did it with telephones, if anyone remembers that. I've been doing that since the mid-'80s. Uh, and started supporting flight sim uh, probably eight, in 88 or 89, and then went to the internet when that was the thing. So that's how I got involved in this. So I've been kind of a long career. I uh, was introduced to flight sim with FS2. Uh, if, if you really remember back in those days, IBM compatible computers had to run Microsoft Flight Simulator to be truly compatible. I see a few people shaking their heads. I got introduced to it at work when we were running it for compatibility purposes. <laughs> <laughs> so really back in the old days. We've been doing this for a long time. And uh, you know, if this kind of audience is an indication how the hobby is going, I guess it's going pretty well. All right, uh, I'm Tom Gilmore. I'm the uh, training coordinator for the US uh, division uh, at uh, IBAO, the International uh, Virtual Aviation Organization. Uh, I've been in flight simulation since about uh, 1999 as a member of IBEO and used it to uh, really uh, help learn more and more and more about airplanes aviation and help me uh, get into a uh, career in aviation. Uh, so I'll just pass the mic back and have it. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. So we'll start with a bit of a discussion around Microsoft's involvement in this program and a question to the panel being, do you see Microsoft ever getting back involved in flight simulation and perhaps thinking about an FS11 at some point in the future? There have been many changes at Microsoft recently. There's been talk about open sourcing things that you would never have thought would be open source before. So is there any thought that Microsoft would be involved? Or are we looking to people like, <laughs> <laughs> are we looking to people like X-Plane, like Lockheed Martin, like Dovetail Games to really carry the future forward? Oh, me? <laughs> you seem like you had something to say. I have a reputation for being opinionated. Um, the, uh, I guess my, the summation of, uh, of my thoughts on that are, oh, I hope not. Um, <laughs> the, uh, you know, the folks at Microsoft did a wonderful job of, of serving us very well and, and giving us a platform to work with. Um, but the larger business goals of a company the size of Microsoft are so different than the larger business goals of little tiny companies like PMDG um, slightly larger companies like Aerosoft, um, that we, I think in probably about 2005 to 2007, we really started to see the needs of those two uh, organizations start to diverge. And we had a, a growing community that needed certain things, uh, one of which was um, a company that was actively involved in the community and willing to make updates and changes and keep up with technology and, and adapt to problems that, that the development community was finding in the platform. And we really lost that uh, at Microsoft. And so uh, personally, uh, I'm very excited about what the future holds with having uh, Dovetail involved. Uh, Dovetail has taken over the IP that was the Microsoft franchise. And I think that we're gonna see, uh, once they've had a chance to really you know, gain some traction, I'm predicting that we're gonna see, uh, to use uh, Pete's word, a real renaissance uh, in that platform. And I'm excited about it. Um, but we also now have choices. We've got Lockheed Martin prepared, which is going in a completely different direction. We've also got X-Plane, which is going in, a, in yet another direction. So we've got uh, multiple platforms that developers can choose from. We've got multiple platforms that simmers can choose from. And ultimately, I, I think that that's really a, a good thing for everybody involved. Check your idea, please. Um, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> the question regarding Microsoft is, I need a crystal ball <laughs> to look into it. Because nobody knows if perhaps in two years there was a managing, uh, the high level manager saying, hey, we are Microsoft. We always have done a flight simulator. Let's do it again. Here's $50 million. Do it. Nobody knows. But uh, I don't expect it. Same with, uh, with Lockheed. 
Um, I expect Lockheed will continue as long as I can, but if there are reasons to stop the program, perhaps uh, reasons military, uh, uh, defense or whatever, uh, then it is not a main product for Lockheed. So if there is a reason, perhaps an accident where the pilot has used Prepare3D, that could happen, uh, that Prepare3D will be taken away from the web. So uh, for me, the future is more or less the uh, new simulator coming from uh, Dovetail based on flight. Let's see what they are doing uh, out of that gaming flight simulator. And of course, uh, X-Plane, which is on the market since uh, about 15 years in development. And uh, you can see the guys are not so old, so they have another 15 to 20 years uh, to support us. <laughs> oh, Austin will, Austin will kill me for that. <laughs> okay. uh, my thoughts are pretty much echo that of both Rob and Winfried here. I am very grateful to Microsoft for the fact that they've created the Microsoft Flight Simulation franchise because, let's face it, if they didn't, probably none of us would be here, or at least very few of us. I mean, quite naturally, Apple's had their own platforms over the years, and I've started really on, on the Apple platforms, and they were great for their time. Um, but uh, I, I think that what we need is sort of a breath of fresh air. And Microsoft is, they're very uh, monetary, they're, they're, they're really oriented in terms of what's going to make money. And I think at the end, that's why they left. Uh, I'm really excited about Dovetail. I have about two billion questions for you guys because I'm really curious about what exactly it is you are doing uh, and at what level of, of a simulator can we really expect. Are we really looking at a simulator that's for the people in this room, for the people that are uh, the, the PMDG fans that are essentially could go out and fly a 737 or fly a 747? Is that what we're looking at or are we looking at essentially what Microsoft did with flight, which is something that I'm not necessarily against, something that's for everyone. Um, that can enjoy. In other words, you can probably never have picked up a yoke before in your life and have something that will teach you and show you how to get into it. And that was one of the great things about FS9. There was a little training program there and you could just kind of learn it as you go along. And what I think is we need something that's out there for everyone. Um, so I, I consider you both as a breath of fresh air. Quite naturally, Lockheed Martin is working on the prepared platform. Um, many of you that follow X know that that's my favorite platform. Um, but we have to face the facts. It's not an entertainment platform, and quite naturally, there are a lot of you that are concerned about that. And I get questions and emails all the time. Would you really recommend I buy you know, P3D because I'm not technically a student, so am I breaking the law or breaking this or breaking that? And the bottom line is, you know, I've, I have great relationships with almost the entire development community. And they all love it as a platform. They love developing for it. They love the support that Lockheed Martin is giving them. They love the fact that uh, they can give Lockheed Martin feedback and then they respond and then they correct things. And that's a level of a relationship that they never really had with Microsoft. So that's the great thing about Prepared. But again, it is a, a platform that they are developing for themselves. They're not really doing it for us. I think we're sort of a byproduct for what they're already doing. And uh, like Winfried, Winfried said here, uh, we don't know how long they're going to be around and naturally it's always going to be some sort of an academic program and not really something for entertainment use. So what the community needs is something out there that is for the community uh, that everyone can fly with a smile. I see people saying, oh, I use prepared, but I don't smile because it's supposed to be serious for academic purposes and so on and so forth. So, I mean, naturally, we, 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 we want to have something that we can openly enjoy and say, hey, this is our, 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 our next platform. So, um, with that said, I am definitely looking forward to seeing what is going to come of Dovetail. Um, I also will touch just very briefly on X-Plane. Um, I won't say something as tried and true as x is not the future, because that, that would be a mean thing to say. Naturally, it is not the most popular platform. Um, and obviously, the future of flight simulation, and this is going to be the ultimate answer to the question, the future of flight simulation is where the development community goes. So where the PMDGs goes, where the flight tampas go, uh, flight beam, the, the list goes on. So wherever the third party developers are is really what the new simulator is going to be. So 
Um, that said, there are some a lot of promises with prepared. They love it. I would like to see that whatever Delta was, is working on, that the developers would get on board with that as well. Um, I think that X Plane could very well potentially be the next platform. They have a group of people who are highly motivated and uh, they love flight simulation, which essentially that's the people we want behind it. We want people that love it and are a part of the hobby as opposed to those that just see it as an opportunity to make money like any other type of video game. So um, it, it, I think it has some shortfalls, but I think if X-Plane were to fix the shortfalls that it has, it very well could p potentially be the next simulator. And I certainly hope so. Maybe it, it might be X-Plane 11 or 12, who knows? But I'm definitely hopeful, and I think the more options we have as a community, the better. That's great, thanks. So let's talk a bit about the options and just some experiences from the room here. I know we've got some probably commentary on the side as well. Oh, yeah. Just to get a just to give a quick idea from the room here, I you know, who's actually tried so other than flights, let's try who has tried flight simulator X before or regularly uses flight simulator X? Probably most of us. So keep your hand up now if you've tried or regularly use P3D. And how about X Plate? Interesting. So a lot of us think, put your hands down, FSX Steam Edition or FSX, I'm kind of including those as one shot here. So clearly not a lot of us have that experience. Uh, Keith, if you wanted to comment back on that original discussion or also start us on what your thoughts are around P3DX plane as well. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah, pretty good. Well, um, <coughs> first of all, the Microsoft's in. I don't want to that room. Uh, it goes in and out on that side of the room <laughs> for some yeah. reason. I think it's like a... I think it's um, one. Yeah, shut up. So you guys should just let us do all the talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 30-minute session. Questions? You hear me? Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. No answer on the Microsoft thing first. Uh, no, I don't think they're coming back. Thank God, good riddance. That's my opinion. Uh, Microsoft recently released a new game platform called Xbox One. Who's got one? Who also lamented the fact that all the launch day titles demanded that after you paid $60, for the game, they then wanted you to hand over another few or four, four, five, six hundred for the DLC and the add-ons. Nobody minded that, just Kyle minded that me. <laughs> that's, that's how Microsoft operate now in terms of the entertainment space. It's DLC, it's add-ons, it's microtransactions. They tried to do that with Flight, and it killed Flight. Flight, however much it's been derided by the community as a whole, had a huge amount of potential underneath the covers, if you speak to the actual development team, not Microsoft, the actual developers. Um, they had a lot of potential, but it got shot in the head and away it went. So no, um, Flight Simulator is gone from Microsoft, good riddance, they killed a really good team, and I'm, I'm happy that they don't have ownership of it anymore. On the X-Plane subject, interesting, uh, DeAndre, uh, about whether or not it's going to be the next sim. I reached out to Austin, and I reached out to most of the X-Plane community when I started looking at it on the channel. I said, I want to look at it, I want your information, I want your help, and a few of them shot it down. A lot of them helped out, stepped up. The video I made is X-Plane 10, the next simulator. Who's seen that? That is the single most watched video on Frugal Sim. There is no other video with more hits than that single video. That speaks a lot about the curiosity behind X-Plane. I believe X-Plane has a huge amount of potential and could very easily be the next platform. It is 64 bit. It does exercise your hardware fully. It is cross-platform. I don't care. It's human. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Actually, I had two sentences to make for that. In fact, oh, that's good. I'm sorry. I'm still going to draw two I had a, obviously, we, we chat in the beta team with the NDG, and emails go back and forth. And I, I can't remember it word for word, but I do remember an email. And I said to, to Rob, I'm going to quote you on that. He sent an email saying, um, I can't remember word for word. I didn't like explaining, but now I'm using it. I can see why other people. So, or something like that. It was something along those lines. <laughs> In summary, no to Microsoft. x is a, is a strong contender. There are a lot of companies stepping up doing flight simulation based technology now. You, you saw Unigen earlier. You saw um, Altera earlier. You have whatever Dovetail come up with. My worry when they say based on flight technology is I hope it's not based on flight's whole microtransaction ethos as well. But we'll see. When's it going to be released? What's the release date? Next year. Is it done? <laughs> so, um, and you asked me to quickly comment on prepared or explain. The two really briefly, I don't think, I got asked this in my speech earlier, I forget who asked the question. I don't think there should be one sim to rule them all. I think it's a great thing to have a lot of competition. And I think it's fantastic by now that we have explain thriving and getting more users than it's ever had. And the people are experiencing, int uh, demonstrating interest in prepared. And then we have a resurgence with FSX because of FSX Scheme Edition. I think having three platforms or four or five is excellent for you all because it drives all the development teams to do more. 
Actually, if you want to take that, and yeah. I just—I mean, you can just ask the question. Justin, give me one. I just kind of—I <laughs> <laughs> don't want to take time away from Justin or or no, because um, I actually this is the first time Nell and I have ever been in the room together, so I, I'd like to hear what he has to say. Um, you know, uh, DeAndre actually made a point that I, I wrote down when he said it because it—I uh, thought it summed up very nicely. If you were to ask me as the person making all the decisions at PMDG, which I'm, I'm not, it's a team thing. Um, where is PMDG going to be in five years and in 10 years? Um, the, the, the phrase that the developers will go, or that the, um, the sims that will survive are where the developers go, um, you know, where the developers are going to go is where we get support. And um, I can't tell you how strong the support is that we get from the x team. Um, I've got a, a Chris Powell who runs our, our x -Plane development. He is in constant communication. He gets a tremendous amount of feedback. We've had uh, numerous things that we've brought to them and said, hey, you know, we're trying to do this and it doesn't work because of, because of this. And, you know, within, sometimes within hours, sometimes days, weeks, months, we get changes. Um, that's what we need as developers to succeed. Uh, Dovetail has already demonstrated a strong affinity for that type of interaction. Um, Microsoft? <laughs> um, it's a polite audience, so I'm not going to describe some of our experiences uh, with them. Um, but you know, in the the P3D team, uh, we don't get a lot of support from them. But you know, that's a different beast. And, and as Winford pointed out, they're developing that for some other purpose, and we just benefit on the side. So uh, when you get right down to it, where are we going to be? And, and this was the point that I wanted to add. Two sentences, you see how that works. Um, that we're going to be where we get support. And right now, we're getting support uh, from Laminar, and we're getting support uh, from Dovetail. And ultimately, that's what matters. When we get that, we can give you the products that you want, and that's where we'll be. Thanks for taking question, or no? Yeah, briefly, I mean, we have no dog in this fight, uh, as Dad said. We want to entertain all platforms. We will entertain all platforms. We'll entertain all comers, we'll entertain all um, uh, aircraft. Any developer will try and work. We will come back to you and say, okay, how do we make your stuff work with our network? How do we get it as real as we possibly can? Um, so why we love Aerosoft, why we love PMDG. They build airplanes that you can fly. And they build stuff that's about as close to real as you're going to get without spending billions of dollars. So, we love to have that and have access to that on that side. Um, I think as long as you out there are demanding that the stuff get better, um, then the producers will, will come up with it. Or they'll fall by the wayside. You know, or somebody like Microsoft will say, not enough money here. Sorry, we're, you know, we're done. <coughs> but then, you know, Dovetail will come along or X-Plane will come along. And, and they'll pick up their game and make it better for all of us. And that's what we care about. And that's the end of my little speech. <laughs> all right, well, to a certain extent, uh, as FlightSim.com, we're in the same boat. Um, we're perfectly happy with, uh, with any sim uh, being popular or being the next big thing. Um, I guess the one thing I miss about Microsoft being gone, um, I don't think much of Microsoft as a software developer. You know, you think about every other version of Windows, it's pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> You've all experienced that. But the one thing they're really good at is uh, marketing and promotion. And so when they stop selling Microsoft Flight Simulator, uh, the awareness of our hobby went down a lot. You know, that there's no longer a product in every single store in the country that's right. flight simulated. And there aren't full page magazine or, or advertisements in you know, popular science and magazines that are not addressed to our community. Uh, that's the one thing we lost when they left. So I think the challenge for the dovetails and the laminars and the companies that are left is to attract people outside our community. Um, and that's where the next big thing is going to be. Um, one thing that no one else addressed is that the next big thing may not even be on PCs. Um, you know, People, people aren't using PCs like they used to be. People are using their phones and tablets. And if, if you haven't looked, go into the Apple store or the, um, the Google store and look up the flight simulator. 
There's a whole bunch of flight simulators in there I bet you've never heard of. Uh, we, we recently did an article on one called Infinite Flight, uh, which has something like 10 million downloads. And uh, as it turned out, I think it was our most popular article last month. So we may have to uh, expand our, uh, our horizons on where things will be. Uh, I don't ever see a, a telephone-based app being as powerful as the sims we're uh, using now, but they may be the entry point for new people to our hobby who will then gravitate to uh, whatever the next big thing is. And I should say the people I had lunch today with made it very clear that the x plane is the next big thing, but then, but then I was having lunch with about 80% of the x plane design team. <laughs> so, uh, and, and I agree, that is definitely one of the next big directions that the hobby is going. So, for those of you who haven't looked at it, you, if, if you've been looking at FlightSim.com, you've noticed that we're putting a lot of effort into sporting things other than FSX, and, and it very much includes x flying. And over the past month or so, you, you hopefully have seen some articles about some of these uh, uh, iOS and Android-based apps as well, and you're going to see more of that. So we're living in interesting times. We'll, we'll see where things go. All right, well, being at the end, I'm not going to beat the dead horse and uh, repeat the same thing that everybody has, but um, as far as with the um, uh, Microsoft no longer being uh, in the game, it's pretty welcome, in my opinion, uh, because it has really just opened up the, the whole industry for competition and people to really find a good product and put it out there for either the person that just wants to hop into a 172 and tool around or the person that takes it incredibly seriously. Uh, but as far as X-Plane, it's fantastic to see um, that working with the FAA and doing uh, PCAT, uh, although the simulators for uh, people wanting to learn how to fly and stuff like that, it's fantastic seeing that and how much uh, these simulators and what Microsoft has started, how much it's really helped people either with their hobby or uh, being able to convert it to experience more in the real world. But uh, that's it for me. We have a nice split on the room here with sort of the community people on this side and the developers on this side. I'm not sure how that happened, but uh, it works out quite nicely for my next question because I think from the community standpoint, it's wonderful to say, well, we like all these different simulators. But I imagine if you're a developer, that poses a lot of challenges for you because you then need to almost do double the effort. And I don't think that much can be ported over from one to the next. So in that vein, and just thinking about myself as a flight sim user and probably those in here, many of us are using flights and we just saw that. So what would you suggest for us? Should we be thinking about that upgrade to prepare to X-Plane, to FSX Steam Edition, to the next thing from Dovetail? Should we be waiting another year or two to see what happens? You know, if you were us, or putting yourselves in our shoes as flight simulation enthusiasts, should we still be working on FSX, or should we be looking to make that upgrade to X-Plane and prepare now, knowing they're available, rather than waiting for something else in the future? Uh, the, uh, <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I, some of you know uh, Pete's on our beta team, and Pete, while you've been sitting in here, we've gotten about 60 emails from the team, and I haven't seen you in there, so I don't, I don't know if you're, you're doing so, any work today or what. Pete and I have, are rapidly becoming dear friends through our, our beta team process, and we, we have a lot of fun together um, doing exactly this sort of interchange. So, um, the uh, you know what what we um, PMDG, it's far simpler for us if we only have to support one platform. Um, but you know, we're a business. Uh, we're, we're a corporation. We are, uh, we're driven to generate a profit. And for us to generate a profit, we need to offer customers choices. And some users really like Microsoft Flight Simulators. Some users really like x -Men. Some users really like Prepare. If we make a decision that we're only going to support one of those platforms, we miss out. Um, I would like to think as a developer that then customers miss out, but the reality is we miss out. So that's why we have spent the last three years reshaping the way our development process works um, and, and pulling our development further and further away from the platform so that we can get more of the airplane simulated and then make the simulator specific adaptations that are necessary so that we can start pushing it into a platform. Ultimately, what we tell people, one of the things um, in our forum that drives me nuts is when people get into the, what I call Coke versus Pepsi arguments. You know, a Boeing is better than an Airbus, or you know, Coke is better than Pepsi, or you know, whatever. Because there really is no right answer to those types of questions. And so I tend to stop down fairly aggressively 
uh, maybe too aggressively at times, on conversations about, well, you know, Microsoft is a better platform than, than X-Plane because of X and Y and Z. Um, you know, I disagree with that. And what I tell people in our forum is the best simulator for you is the one that satisfies your needs for flight simulation. So if you try X-Plane and that does what you want, then that's, that's the one you should use. Uh, and if you try the Microsoft platform and that's the one, then great. Uh, I should probably start calling it the dovetail platform. I just saw you make that face. Um, <laughs> so the, um, so let, just go back through the transcript, change Microsoft to dovetail and we'll be good. Um, but you know, and if prepared is the one that works for you, then use that one. Um, there's really no wrong answer. It's whatever works for you, that's the one to go with. And fortunately, we're, we're at an age now where a lot of us as developers are starting to get mature enough in our size and our scope and our capabilities that we can support multiple platforms. And that gives you the choice. Everybody wins. Um, yes, I, I would really recommend something. Everybody who is using FS9 should know. <laughs> 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 Should now think a about a new simulator. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> now, we have faced out that about 20% of the community, perhaps a little bit more, are still using FS9. And uh, for Aerosoft, I can say that we have decided at the beginning of the year that more or less all products will not or new products will not be compatible anymore with FS9. So uh, if you are still using FS9, think about uh, perhaps prepare or explain. That's uh, your choice. But uh, you would help the developers if you would say, OK, FS9 is dead. Because it, makes, it, it costs a lot of work to support four platforms. That's true. Uh, a lot of the conversations that I have with the development community is their biggest constraint and their biggest frustrations right now is the fact that they have to develop for multiple platforms. Um, I'll take a few Orbix developers, for example. They're spending a, a huge amount of time to go in and create these triple installers. We're not even talking about FS9 anymore. We're just talking about the fact that we have FSX. Um, prepared, released version one. A lot of people found that that was sort of a better FSX. Uh, and then they stuck with that, then prepared released V2, and so now uh, we have Dovetail obviously coming out with their platform, and it is a lot. And I did say that the more options we do have, the better. Um, as far as how long it takes to get whatever that next platform is, I mean, let's face it, we feel like it's not fair. If Grand Theft Auto can run so great on our computers and all these other games that everyone has, how come we cannot have that same kind of performance? Um, so it's a double-edged sword. If prepared goes v, or goes 64-bit, then the biggest concern is, well, none of my add-ons work anymore. So I don't want it, but I want it, but I don't want it. So that's the other problem. Um, I think the only real way that the gap can be bridged if we're going to have multiple platforms is the platform developers communicating with each other. Again, I think the best is for us to have options. But if we can put as little work on the developers as possible in terms of backwards compatibility, then I think that would be, it, it would not be the next platform, it would be the next platforms. Because if one developer develops one aircraft and it only takes about a week or two weeks to go through that backwards compatibility process, then it might be conceivably feasible for them. One of the things that Orbix said is when Lockheed Martin releases the next platform, I know a lot of people weren't happy when V1.4 became V2 and then you had to buy it all over again. Well, at some point, they're probably going to hit another point and you're going to have to buy that all over again. And one of the things that John Vitima stated is that when that platform comes, your quadruple inst installers are not going to be free. There's not going to be a fee for that. And uh, one of the developers told me that you know, they would have released almost probably twice as many products within the period of last year if they didn't have to put so much focus into just simply developing uh, so many triple installers because that's the big thing now is everyone wants everything fully compatible with their platform. So as far as the next platform and, or how long we have to wait, I think as, as like, like Robert said, you know, the support they get, like, for example, from the guys from X-Plane is great. You know, and I mentioned the same thing with Prepare. But I think if the developers communicate with each other, 
and create a means for which it is not too complex on the development community, then I see no reason why the development community can't go in every direction and find a way to make it work. And um, I think as Rob said, you know, your simulator, what works for you, works for you. So that's great. So if we do have these three options out there, and there's something for everyone, but they can still buy the same products for each, then I think everybody wins. That's great. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to be the host. I'll just say, explain 50% off on Steam, this week, Steam is on the center. Thank you for that. So I'll pass it down to Tom now, and you have a chance to speak first on a new subject. Oh, wow. If that's okay. If you're prepared for it. All right. I would want to talk a little bit about, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about real world applications for flight simulator and how these platforms are helping for real pilots, whether they be in the airlines, general aviation, and really sort of how you see flight simulation impacting, particularly the lives of pilots who may be getting involved with aviation as a career. All right. Well, that one's up my alley. Um, I'll basically, yeah, yeah. Um, I'll basically just uh, tell you my story with it, and that was uh, uh, grew up with my father's uh, uh, Marine Corps pilot, uh, was always around it, and uh, uh, as a teenager started playing around with the simulators, and then realized, hey, you know, I really enjoy this, and I uh, got a job at a small airport, uh, fueling airplanes to help me pay for flight training. Anyway. Um, I was a member of IBEO uh, during the time, uh, and uh, I had instructors that were helping me out, uh, whether it was learning about air traffic control or flying or anything like that. I always had people helping out. It was actually uh, SATCO at the time, uh, before the split, but... Uh, That's uh, why Dallas is sitting between you two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 we're drinking. Oh, All right, but uh, uh, it helped tremendously. Honestly, it was a huge, huge, huge help. Uh, it got to the point to where, I mean, I soloed after, I think it was eight and a half hours or something like that, and the average is closer to, you know, 17-ish. Uh, but uh, it helped me out a lot, and uh, I would recommend it for anybody. If somebody is thinking about a career in aviation or anything like that, go and buy a simulator. Go and download uh, as many add-ons <coughs> as you can afford. Uh, and from there, just learn as much as you can reach out to some of the online organizations like us or VATSIM. Um, there are just fanta uh, fantastic resources out there uh, if it's something that you would want to do. Uh, because I can tell you now, it helped me tremendously. Thank you. Now, I'm pilot two and uh, was in flight simulation first. Um, at the time I did this, I got my license I think, 24 years ago. And the simulations were a little bit more primitive than they were now. Um, so at the time it was not as helpful, but I think, I think now um, if you're going into flying as a career, you can learn an awful lot from the simulation, um, a lot more than you did in the past, and it's become acceptable. Um, I remember as a student pilot mentioning my flight school that I use flight simulators, and you know, you get the hairy eye from people. It's like, oh, that's, that was just toys. Well, even back then they weren't toys. You could at least learn procedures and stuff. Uh, but people who were in aviation as a career didn't believe in them at that point. But if you look at it now, they do. Um, you know, like magazines like AO for Pilot, which are for real pilots, have flight simulator articles in them. So, you know, like Tom said, you, you can definitely get a lot of benefit out of your simulator time uh, if you want to make a career out of it. Um, we were going to ask people how many, how many pilots there were in the room. This might be a good time to do that. How, who, who in the room is a pilot? Or a horse gene pilot or has some flight experience as well. <laughs> okay, pretty, pretty good number. But you know what? That, that pretty well corresponds with the uh, polls we've done over the years. I think that was somewhere between a quarter and a third of the room. Yeah. And even years ago, uh, we took polls on flightsin.com and got about that same percentage. So it's a pretty good crossover people that obviously use their flight simming for, uh, for their real life flying. So, that's great. I, I think we answered our question right there. So uh, my question would be, um, if everybody here is a flight sim pilot, is that true? How many of you fly out of line? Show of hands. Wow. That's not bad. All right. How many of you don't fly out of line? Why? It's not man well enough. Huh? It's not man well enough. There's too many empty air True enough. Okay, that's not bad. It's too much of a rookie getting slammed by other people saying, hey, what are you doing? You got some things up. 
concerned about internet speeds. Really? Yeah. Okay. I would, I would, and I'm sure Tom would too, I would uh, suggest that you all log on and fly online. Doesn't cost you anything. Software is downloadable either from IVAO or VATSIM. It's all free. Install it on your, on your computer. Log on. If you want to, sit at an airport and just watch for a while. But, but the difference in the experience between sitting in front of a computer and boring holes in the sky in your basement <laughs> and sitting at a computer and boring holes in the sky in your basement while you're talking to somebody else <laughs> is, is really game-changing. <laughs> and as everybody has said, if you want to be a pilot, if you want to get out into the real world and actually fly, the experience you pick up online is invaluable. Just learning how to talk to, to, uh, to uh, ATC, getting comfortable using the mic, getting comfortable multitasking. I'm doing this, but I gotta change frequencies. Uh, I'm doing this, but I gotta read a plate because I'm getting into my ILS pattern now. I, I mean, it's all there for you. It, you've, already, you've already made the biggest expense. You bought the computer and you bought your flight simulator. Now it's free after this, it's free game. So I would advocate that because I do know a lot of real world pilots who will before they fly somewhere, if they can, they'll go buy the scenery for where they're flying to. And then they'll fly their route. And they'll practice their approaches. And, and they'll pick up some landmarks. And they'll, you know, so that by the time you get into the airplane and fly there, it's almost like you're coming home instead of it's, oh my god, oh no. no. So try it. Um, you know, we'd love to have you. Can you do instrument approach? Absolutely. Full instrument. Absolutely. What about the currency of the shop? Um, they are as up to date as the charts that you're putting in your cockpit in your airplane. And it's all, all that, by the way, is free online. Go to flightaware.com, put in your airport, and you will find every chart for that airport SIDS, STARS, ILS approaches, VOR approaches, you name it, it's all there. Airport diagrams. I'd just like to make one comment. No, it's not a question, but, but the controllers won't beat you up. If you're really, if you're a little unsure, they won't beat you up. In fact, they'll help you out, and, and you can chat with them uh, without being, you know, everybody else. Yeah, I mean, don't choose your maiden flight in the middle of an event. <laughs> if, we're, if we're doing, if we're doing, you know, across the pond, and we've got 500 guys who are trying to fly from England to the United States, that shouldn't be your newbie flight. <laughs> but any other time. Sign on and put in your comments. New, you know, new to online flying might need help. You'll find guys who will come looking for you to say, well, how can we help you? What can we do? So, thanks. I'm sorry. You know, a, a, I think a lot of folks um, in the community today don't recognize that um, I was a simmer long before I was a pilot. Uh, and you know, I can pull my rating out and throw it on the table with the best of them now. I mean, you know, I've rated on everything from uh, turboprop commuters to the 747. Um, but my simming experience started when I was in the fifth grade, uh, staying after school in the computer lab because that's what you had to do to get access to a computer back in those days, um, with two other school buddies of mine. And we would sit there and we'd watch these little green lines and somehow that all made sense to us. And um, you know, and interestingly enough, all three of us are professional pilots. Um, so, you know, there's there's a lot to be said for using it as a, a springboard to get into professional aviation if that's what you want. You can learn a tremendous amount. Uh, when I was going through getting my uh, 747 type rating, my sim buddy was coming off of the classic whale. He had the only glass he'd ever seen on an airplane was the one handed to him uh, in the bar at the end of the day. And, um, <laughs> This guy would get, you, I, you've never seen somebody get lost in an FMS like this guy could get lost. So I gave him a copy of our software, which again is 10 years old now, and uh, all of a sudden he started to show up uh, in the sim and he, and he was a lot more comfortable with all the different modes and what the thing was telling him and what it was telling him not to do and that sort of stuff. So you know, there's a lot to be said there. Um, and you know, we have, at PMDG, we have started to uh, have a lot of interaction with uh, the Boeing company. 
um, with uh, some of the makers of, of some of the big simulation platforms out there. They're coming to us and looking at what we're doing and, and there's all of a sudden now in the training community there is a real eye toward taking this technology and moving it into the professional training environment in order to give people a leg up so that when they're in the simulator learning, they spend less time trying to figure out what the buttons and switches and knobs do and which mode is supposed to replace which and that sort of stuff. Because if a pilot's focused on what lights are supposed to come on or turn off, they're not really learning. When you can get a pilot comfortable with that stuff and then put them in the box and start teaching them flying the airplane, you then get the opportunity to teach them judgment. And ultimately, judgment is what separates good pilots from bad pilots. So uh, the training community is starting to look at at this community and see some advantages. So there's there's really a lot to it. Anything else, Dan? Uh, yeah, sure. About 30 seconds or so. Uh, Oh, um, yeah, I think uh, you will hardly find a younger pilot in Europe which has no experience with flight simulation. Uh, all people we are talking at trade shows uh, and so on, which are pilots now, they tell us we have started with FS-98, FS-2000, FS-9, whatever. Even the director of the German division of AOPA told me years ago, that he first started with FS4 and then started to get a real pilot. So uh, I think within the last 15 years, nearly 90% of all young pilots have used flight simulation. And I think that's, that makes it clear that it is useful. Because if it wouldn't be useful, not uh, it, it wouldn't have been used uh, used by so many pilots. Uh, yeah, just really quickly, I remember <clears throat> my first time flying an aircraft. And I'm not a pilot, but uh, I was really surprised. I, I expected that I would be super nervous. And by that time, I had already had probably 4,000 flying hours on the simulator. I was really surprised that I wasn't nervous. Everything was in its place. It wasn't like the first time I drove the car and I'm shaking and doing everything. I mean, it, it really shocked me at just how much enjoying flight simulation as an entertainment platform really prepared me for the real thing. And I know there's probably a few people in the room that are like waiting for that moment when the flight attendant comes out and says, oh, is there anyone who can fly the plane? But the bottom line is, you know, you get there and you really do feel like, oh my God, I know this. It's, it's like deja vu. It's like, oh, I know this. This is great. I can do this. And when the aircraft does exactly what the flight simulator aircraft does, you realize just how much that's prepared you. Um, so absolutely. And obviously, airlines train their pilots on the simulators before they go out to the real thing. So there's no, there's no uh, question as to whether or, uh, or, or rather the, the, the training potential of the flight simulator. But I wanted to touch just really quickly on the online flying because someone, um, I think someone in the audience mentioned that you know, they're nervous or something like that. I can't think of a better place to learn how to communicate than that to arrive out because you're essentially in the same environment. You're there with a lot of pilots, they're using the exact lingo, and you're gonna still have, you, you already, you're already nervous, so you're gonna have that same nervousness that you would already have in real life, except that if you screw up, you know, it's not that big a deal. And as someone said, it's, you know, the tower guy is not gonna chew you out or anything like that, but it's a great place to learn and listen, you know, I love listening just to air traffic control, and that might put some people to sleep, but I can just listen to that for hours, because it's incredible how fast they shoot it out, and then I'll go back and try to pronounce it, you know, and I'll always slip and get a tongue twister, and I think a lot of us are afraid of that, or we'll freeze up or pause, and they will but, chew you out. yeah, okay, Rob says they'll chew you out, but you know what, that's no, no, okay, no, no, oh, oh, the real guys will, oh, no, without a doubt, so when you, when you get out, there, so I, again, just like the flight simulator, I think that's a great opportunity, a great platform, to prepare yourself so that when you are there, you're not perhaps as nervous as you might have been. Alternatively, um, there are a lot of people that visit Air Daily X and they never go online. A lot of people, I, I exchange emails with a lot of the readers and they say the same things, I don't go online for this particular purpose. So what a lot of us do is we go on Digital Theme Park and if anyone wants any, any further information on that, feel free to come see me. But we'll go into an environment where we all go online, we connect to the server, we communicate with each other, someone, we might designate someone to do the tower, or we might just spin patterns and talk to each other. You know, and if you're going into a pattern and you're on upwind and you get something incorrect, someone just say, you know what, actually, this is the right way to say that. This is the right way to announce your position, so on and so forth. So you can go on with your friends and you can learn, and then maybe that might perhaps maybe prepare you for the, the VATSIM or the IVAL guys, but definitely don't allow that to be a discouragement. Allow, look at it as your own training potential and uh, take advantage of it. 
If anybody's filming this, by the way, and got DeAndre's stewardess impression, can you send me a copy? I want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft got out of it and you're kind of wondering what's going to happen, but uh, a lot of folks have jumped in and really taken uh, the bull by the uh, horns and uh, are developing fantastic products and add-ons um, and allowing people to either uh, do training or uh, just enjoy their, their, their hobby. Uh, so in general, uh, I think things are looking great. Uh, I have personally uh, a huge my staff has a huge number of students uh, right now that we're trying to get through uh, people are really interested in uh, simulation flying online uh, it's a fantastic thing and so hopefully things will just continue this way uh, because it is looking like a, a good future well I guess I can't argue with that uh, we, we all hope for a good future for, for the hobby um, my position in it as um, you know, as flightsim.com is probably a little different. Uh, what I would like to ask you all to do is make a point of participating. Um, you know, IVIO and VATSIM would certainly like to have you participating there. Uh, we'd like to see you participating at flightsim.com. We've, we've added a lot of features to make that easier over the years. Uh, the most recent one being that you can now comment on files. I don't know how many people even notice that we do stuff like that, but. Uh, I'm quite surprised when we publish an article and 10,000 people read it and one person leaves a comment. You know, let, let us know what you think, because uh, we're here trying to support the hobby. Uh, you know, one of the big questions today is where is the hobby going, and we need for you folks to tell us where you want us to go uh, so we can support you better. So that would, that would be my big comment uh, as to what would help us help you more. Is that a question? Yes, I never used it. Telling me is you can fly online, download a plane or something. Well, that I'm probably not the right person to ask, but, but the IBAO and Vetson will let you fly a Microsoft flight simulator plane with other pilots. Okay. And that's a good question for the next seminar. We're just about to talk more about building an at-home simulator and all those types of things. Just the next seminar. What about seaplanes? Every type of airplane you can probably find. Yep. Uh, Shuttles. Uh, Jill, you yeah. If you haven't looked at my website, go to flightsim.com and, and join the larger <laughs> online community and, and take part. That's, uh, that's what I would love to see you all doing. I have to, three or four little bullet points. Um, what I think we're heading towards flight sim is increased realism, thanks to uh, guys like uh, Rob and, and, uh, Eric and, and, and the Aerosoft. I'm sorry, I forgot your name, but Aerosoft. Uh, you know, and majestic, and I mean, there are some great producers now who are making wonderful aircraft. So we're going toward increased realism. We're going toward um, uh, the FAA is beginning to accept simulator hours from our simulators toward your license. 
which is going to cut the cost of you getting a license, which is a, which is a big thing because it's what killed me, you know, 40 years ago. Um, they won't take a lot of hours, but they'll take some, and so that's that's important. Um, you're getting uh, you're getting training uh, that that's that's applicable in the real world. And then the thing, the other thing that's very cool about flight simulation um, is out there in that in that hall, if you get a chance, there's somebody who's very involved in the STEM program. Um, I think it's called Hot Seat Sim. And, and STEM, for those of you who don't know, is science, technology, uh, um, engineering, and math. Real important in our schools to get people into those disciplines, you know, so that America stays, you know, strong and, and, and maintains its leadership position in the world. They're using flight sim to get guy, kids, males and females, um, into math and engineering and science and technology. Places that are just so dry normally that it's like, oh man, not me. Now, everything you do in flight, you know, it's trigonometry, it's algebra, it's weight and balance, it's, you know, how do I build this, how do I design it, how do I apply it? Um, and, and they're using simulation, bringing that into the schools, getting people excited about these disciplines. And, um, and, and that's good for all of us. So uh, for my part, it's great to see this kind of crowd and this kind of enthusiasm. And uh, I hope it continues. Tell all your friends, get them involved. And please get online. I don't care if it's, you know, it doesn't matter if it's IVAO or Benson. Get online. It'll be a better experience for you. Support developers, buy yourself an and have fun, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you know, uh, this, uh, my, for closing thoughts on, uh, you know, it really is what you make of it. Um, the, um, you know, I, years ago when I decided to run for office, which again was a bad decision, but um, I had a very dear friend of mine, someone who'd known me almost my whole life, and she said to me, and she said, I just want you to promise me that you'll enjoy the process. Because ultimately, it's really about the friendships that you're going to make along the way. It's not about what you're doing. And when you really get down to what all of us do, whether it's uh, where you go to school, or what you do for a career, or what you do for a hobby, it's about the friendships. Because if, if you're not enjoying yourself and, and building friendships and, and having fun with it, what's the point? Um, you know, the, uh, what what PMDG and the community has meant to me is, uh, you know, some of my very nearest and dearest friends now are folks that I've met uh, through PMDG and, and through this hobby and this experience. Um, so don't get so in, so down in, in deep with it that you, you forget that sometimes it's it's about the people you meet along the way. Uh, because those are the things that, that uh, you know, when you get to the, the end of the, the road that we all get to eventually, it's going to be those experiences that add value to, to what you decided to do with your life. Thank you. Uh, I think as long as we have a community, then we have a very simple rule. Every market will find its product. So even if all the products we are talking about will disappear, and there is still a community which would like to buy platinum products, then there will be a product upcoming. So I think the community is the core of the future. If the community is gone, then the products are gone. If there is a market, if there is a community, then there will be products always. It doesn't matter from whom they come, but there will be products. So uh, it's up to you. Mine's just short and sweet. Uh, I just want to just say how great it is that so many people have come down to this convention. Uh, my understanding is, is this is the biggest it's ever been, and the, I think it's, this is only the third, the third time that the event promoters put it on. I really want to just send a huge thanks out to Nicole and her team at Glander and Associates, if I got that right. Hope I, hopefully I didn't butcher it up. You go to Europe and they have multiples of these things every year and they're just maxed. They're packed with people. And I, it, it just makes me wonder, why are we not showing that same kind of support here in the States? I mean, naturally, it takes someone to put it on. My wife and I came out from the West Coast. I can tell you it was not cheap. It's hard to get a direct flight into this airport. Um, so I, I, I get it. it it's, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's obviously the East Coast. Um, but it, the fact that you all showed up definitely sh shows your, your dedication to the hobby. And uh, it shows your enthusiasm. And I'm just glad that all of you who did show up 
came, and hopefully next year can be bigger. And obviously, the more people that show up, the more developers will get involved. I was talking with a lot of developers that wanted to be here. There were some that were just skeptical because they didn't think it was going to be a big deal. So naturally, when they co when okay, it's my time. You guys playing the music? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I did say this was going to be short and sweet. But the bottom line is the fact that you're all is showing up. It, it, I think it just it'll give a lot. Hopefully, it'll give a lot of emphasis for those who didn't come. To, to want to show up again next year. So again, thanks to Nicole and those who put this on. We hope you guys do it for us again next year, and who knows, if it gets big enough, maybe we can do it more than once a year. That would be great. Absolutely. Thank you very much, guys.